Hello everybody, this is again Dr. Ali Magibal. And this presentation will focus on coherent PPSK. So we'll look at the performance of binary phase shift keying. We'll start with the definition of what PPSK is, signal constellation. We'll look at the transmitted and receiver, and we'll look at the error probability of binary phase shift keying. So to understand the error probability, we need to define what is our model. We'll look at the transmitter and the receiver. Here we go. The, pass, uh, the band pass transmission model is given by the following. We have a source. We have then to encode the signal. We have the modulator, the communication channel, and then the detector at the receiver side. Uh, to, we'll, we'll assume that in general, the modulated signal or generate distinct level. So we have S1, 2, 3. If it's binary, if we are dealing with binary PSK, then we'll, we'll look at uh, 1 and 2 only. We have two signals. But in general, we have uh, capital M number of symbols. And then every symbol covers the duration of T seconds. The assumed channel will assume the channel to be linear with bandwidth that is enough to accommodate our signal with negligible distortion. And of course, the noise added will assume to be additive white Gaussian noise with power spectral density in node 2. So those are our assumptions, and we are ready to evaluate the performance. For the coherent phase shift keying, we have, we're sending one of two signals. So our first signal, to represent 1 and 0, we have a cosine or minus cosine. So in fact, binary phase shift keying is also could be considered considered as amplitude shift keying because a 180 degree phase shift is equivalent to uh, the same amplitude of the minus sign. Of course, the constant here is just to scale by the energy to make sure that the energy of the signal is EB. The energy would be if you integrate over one period and then you will get the energy to be EB. So EB is a transmitted signal energy per, per bit. FC is the frequency. And we pick the frequency to be uh, an integer multiple of 1 over TB, the bit duration. So we get integer number of cycles within the bit duration. The two signals here are called antipodal or opposite phase signals. So in this slide, we have stated what signals we, ha we have, a signal and its minus sign. The bases that we'll use will be very similar. We have only one base, and this is, uh, of course, normalized energy. So if you make AB equal to 1, and the signal will get the following expression. And uh, to make sure that this is just to confirm that this have a unit of energy of 1, you can integrate this from minus infinity integration of the square of this. And of course, it's 0 outside, so the integration limit will change from 0 to TB. I am replacing the signal with its square, so the square root will disappear. This is 2, TB, and then cosine squared. To integrate cosine squared, we use that trigonometric identity, 1 half plus cosine double the angle. So we have 1 half plus cosine double the angle. And if you integrate, integration of over two periods will give you 0. So this is going to uh, cancel out. And it's shown here uh, where the 2 cancels with the 2. And this first expression would be TB. So the TB cancels with the TB, and then we get, this is going to give you a constant, which is 1. Since this is 0, I am ended up with 1, which is expected because this is normalized basis, the energy equal to 1. We just have proven this. Uh, of course, uh, you know that uh, this is going to be 0 because we have integrating over multiples of the period, we make sure that Fc is, is multiples of, of the period. And of course, integration of cosine is sine, and that is guaranteeing that we get zero. All right, now let's look at the signal constellation, the transmitter and the receiver for coherent phase shift keying. Okay, the signal constellation is shown here. We have one base, we have two signals, which are equal to square root of Eb times the base in the positive and in the negative side. We have two possible signals. If you want to expand this and look at the waveform, then this is how the waveform would look like, since our basis is, is, is a cosine. 
or we have a minus cosine which is shown here notice that we have multiple periods within multiple periods within the time given for one bit one bit if you want to see the transmitter and the receiver we have a binary sequence data this data is going to be represented with plus or minus and then of course multiplied by a product modulator and this cosine would be either positive or negative and scaled by the proper energy at the receiver side we have to compare with the basis we have a product correlator and then we have to make the proper decision so this is the transmitter and here is the receiver very similar to what we had before but now we know that our basis is made of cosine and sine for the case of band bass modulation uh, if you look at the the diagram again on the right is the reproduction of the constellation diagram so we know we can also represent how much of the signal is in phi 1 at the receiver side you get s11 or s21 which means how much of the signal is represented if, if there is no noise you will get square root of eb the energy and similarly for the second signal which is a zero you get minus square root of eb so this is the minimum average energy constellation because we have the smallest power uh, we have the smallest distances around the origin so this signal constellation for binary phase shift keying has minimum average energy of course assuming we have equal probable s1 and s2 if they are not equal probable maybe we have to shift to make sure that the one that is repeated more get closer to the center okay now the signal are located at plus e and minus e as we have seen before so this is kind of summary to, to what we have done in the previous slide now if you want to do the error error probability of the binary phase shift keying then we have we kind of have done this before in baseband communication the only difference is now we have bases that are cosine and minus cosine but similarly if we have you if, if we split the, the region into two parts and then we have two decision regions uh, all points that are close to m1 or this signal will be represented by uh, will be closer to this point square root of eb and all point on this side of the spectrum of, of, of the region would be demodulated as minus square root of eb which is uh, transmission of zero s2 now assuming equally likely equally probable symbols the decision boundary of course will be minimum distance which is the midpoint between the two symbols we have seen this with baseband but now as we say it we have it we, we can see it with band bass communication we'll also get the similar optimum threshold in case of non-equal a priori probabilities then let's say this is p0 probability of sending zero or sending one we can adjust the threshold accordingly to get the optimum threshold so in a similar way since we are dealing with geometry it doesn't matter whether we are dealing with baseband or band bass so uh, we just mentioned the decision rule decide in favor of s1 binary one if the received signal lies in z1 area and decide in favor of s2 if we or binary zero if the received signal lies on this side of the spect of of the region now if you want to look at the uh, phase probability of error for the phase key first shift keying and we're dealing with coherent because we assume that we are correlating with the base which means we know the exact phase that was transmitted so we call it coherent we can represent the distribution of the probability with these gaussian curves so for probability of error if we start with s2 transmitted which is this signal then of course you get these two regions and then the probability of having error would be from zero to infinity because we are sending this curve and we are crossing the boundary from zero to infinity so i would integrate from zero to uh, if the received signal will be getting the signal and correlating with uh, with phi one from zero to tb now this will give you the conditional probability which is gaussian so this is nothing but the representation of this gaussian which is shifted to the to, to s21 which is the component of the negative or the dc value here and uh, of course this would be a negative quantity so minus minus would be shifting to the left 
and of course that would be a positive AB because the S21 is nothing but square root of AB. So of course we have the variance coming from noise. So this is the guy that that's to be integrated and this is the region that we want to find which is shown in this curve. Okay, so if you find this, then we, we can find the probative error and then we can assume symmetry. Which we are doing in, in, in the following slide, integration from zero to infinity for the conditional BDF, I substituted for the Gaussian. Now, I will take all the argument here, root of this argument, and I will call it Z to change the variable. So now this everything inside would be Z squared. We have also to change the differential for both sides and we have to change the limits. So if X equal to zero, then that everything here would be square root of EB over a naught. And if X equal to infinity, that's going to be infinity. We have changed the limit, changed the variable inside. And also we have changed the differential where, where if you take DZ will be DX over square root of N naught. And this is why this N naught cancels. Once more, to go from here to here, we change the variable, we change the differential, and we change the limit. I think we have done this a couple of times, so this is why we're just doing it a bit quick. This is the, this integration can be written in, in terms of error complementary function, and this is the definition of error complementary function. And we can write the probability of error for the case of P10, which means sending zero but getting one, is given by the following expression. That's this probability. Now, we can continue in the same way and by looking at the similarity, similarly and similarity or symmetry, conditional error probability for S1 can be found in the same way and we get P01 is equal to P10. Mistaking 0 to 1 will be just like mistaking 1 to 0. And if you, are, if you assume that they are a priori having the same probability, it can scale by half which is basically is one of them. So the probability of P01 is just the average probability of error given by the following expression. Now this is the final answer for the coherent phase shift keying as transmitted by uh, in terms of energy and noise. It makes sense that increase the energy we have less error, increase noise we have more error. This expression should be the conclusion of this slide. We can plot it and we will be comparing it with coming videos. You should be able to give an EB, given a note to evaluate the following expressions using table or MATLAB or whatever mean you have. All right, so that's the end of the slides and I would like to thank you for being good listeners and please follow in the next videos where we'll look at uh, other types of modulations. If you have any comment, please write in the comment section.